Hi lads, this is the first video of five that Subpar but in HD are doing in partnership with the Rocket League Universal Open. Give them a gander at universalopen.gg and visit us at youtube.com slash c slash subpar but in HD. Competitive Rocket League is great. It's exciting, frantic, fast and full of literally amazing team plays. It's just one ball, two goals, and six players. Usually, but some tournaments, some super prestigious tournaments, I am HO, a 2v2 instead of 3v3. This video explains the key differences in the twos game compared to the threes. And, spoilers, it's way less forgiving. Even at the highest level, 3v3 players are actually expected to miss the ball at times. Seriously, keep an eye out for how often top players dive at the ball when they're the furthest man forward. That's because they know that even if they miss, they've got players back in support. In fact, even if they do get beaten to the ball, diving in is okay because it forces the opponents to hit the ball in a particular direction, essentially forcing the ball left, right or down the middle. Their teammates can then cover that direction. Meanwhile, the third player drops deep in case the first and second player get lobbed, making the entire play extremely safe. Which brings us back to 2v2. Now, mathematicians among us may have noticed that in a team of two, there is no third man, making the whole diving in thing way more risky. And we mean way, way more risky. Every time you charge forward, there's a chance you'll concede an open goal, increasing the pressure to time each challenge perfectly and resulting in a plethora of extra goal explosions over the course of the five minutes. Basically, make the wrong decision at any moment and you won't just lose pressure and territory, you're likely to concede a goal. And top tip, conceding goals is bad. We didn't concede because I whiffed the ball, random teammate I just match made with. It was the other guy's fault for, uh, overcommitting? In twos, it's always abundantly clear where the blame lies if you make a mistake. Nowhere to turn, nowhere to run. Just you, your teammate, and your own increasing feelings of humiliation. Having others to blame does more than get your toxic teammates off your back. It also allows you to keep your head up and remain confident. As twos can punish every mistake, the head game is even more important. If you can dig deep and avoid tilting, you already have a huge advantage over your opponents. Also, this is all just when you're solo queuing at silver two. Now scale up the pressure by a factor of 100 with an exclamation mark at the end of it when you consider that pros play with thousands of dollars on the line, perhaps in front of millions of viewers in full HD on respected TV channels like the award-winning and universally renowned NBC. In Professional Threes, the defending team can read the game well enough to block most solo plays at source. Uh, no, Mr. Air Dribbler, I will not give you the time and space necessary in order to get the ball on your nose and carry it over my teammates' heads. This means solo goals are increasingly rare, with most coming from passing plays and sustained pressure. Obviously, that's not to say that solo goals never happen, it's just that more often than not, goals are coming from the two things we mentioned, passing plays and sustained pressure. Back to 2v2. Again, mathematicians may have noticed that having four total players instead of six results in way more space on the pitch. This means there's more time for air dribbles and flip resets and delayed dodgers and all those hip and trendy moves the cool kids do that demand over-the-top VFX and hardcore German 90s techno. Oops, 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 oops. While positioning is king in both, mechanical skill influences the result way more in twos than it does in threes. So, expect lots of air dribbles and flicks, as well as great players expressing their creativity with the ball under their control. Some players can dominate the leaderboards, and more importantly, the pro scene, in ones, twos, threes, turtle goals only, fours, hoops, drop shot, just all the things, okay? The point is, there are players out there that can adapt to any game mode with ease. Unfortunately, for one reason or another, others struggle. For players whose speed trumps their mechanics, professional 2v2 games can be a step too far. Don't be surprised if you see well-known 3s experts lose out to relative nobodies in the early rounds of a 2v2 tournament. So there you have it, 4 key ways in which 2v2 is unique and interesting compared to boring old 3s. 
We're pleased to announce this video is the first in a series of 2v2 tutorial videos covering a whole host of two-centric topics, all brought to you in partnership with the handsome folks over at the Rocket League Universal Open, in case you somehow hadn't guessed. Guess we'll see you next episode, you budding enthusiasts.